can also use the same principles for installing your oven onto a pre-made base if you have one in your garden. And there's a couple of things that are really important. The first is that the edge between the floor of the oven and the dome tends to be a little bit untidy or can look untidy. So what we'd like to advise you to do is to actually bury the base of the oven into your surrounding refractory aggregate so that the oven looks like it's finished uh, sitting on the finished surface. Now you're going to need a pile of tools to, to do this procedure. So let's run through the tools and the ideas uh, that you need. The first thing then, the tools. Uh, you're going to need a couple of hand trowels. You're going to need a spade. You're going to need a wheelbarrow, which is running. Oh, well, there you go. Yeah, wheelbarrow. You're also going to need a uh, mastic gun so that you can put the fire cement and the high temperature uh, silicon uh, into the grooves and the, around the oven. I suggest you get some safety glasses. These are my dead trendy ones. Get them from a dentist. Uh, you'll need some masking tape, a pair of gauntlets. Uh, these are the rubber ones. Marigolds don't work so good. Uh, and don't get the pink ones. It just won't make you look cool. So these red ones are really nice. You can get them from most DIY stores. Uh, a Stanley knife. You'll also need um, a round wooden roller. Uh, and these are one of those fence posts. Or a heavy-duty hardwood um, broom handle also works cool. And you'll need some concrete mix. Uh, and that's to fill this area around the oven. Now, just get a proprietary uh, concreting mix, uh, not the post mix. It's important that you don't get the post mix. The post mix is, ha has too big of stones in it. And this stuff is cool because it's already got the sand, the cement, and the aggregate that you need. And all you have to do is add water. And for the small oven, you'll need a couple of bags. And for the medium-sized oven on the rustic stand, I think you'll need four bags. But you'll see that up in the, the text as to what you need. Right, that's that one. That's quite heavy. Right, and then you need to decide how you want to finish the oven off. Now you could just render in here with just the concrete in sand and leave it as a trowel finished or as a brushed finished. But you can also get a little bit more trendy by getting some of these mosaics. Now at the tile shops they've got hundreds of really, really beautiful mosaic things. And the nice thing about the mosaic is as you build it into the side of the oven, it's going to kind of sit at this level here, uh, level with the bottom lip of the uh, base. And it also means that you can trim the tiles to follow the edge of the oven all the way around. And that looks really, really cool. Uh, and you get them, like I say, in a multitude of different colors and shapes and designs and all that kind of stuff. I suggest you get the tiles which are good for bathrooms because they're harder wearing and you're not going to have any problems outside. You can also go for these lovely Moroccan tiles. And keep in mind that you have to keep the mix that you're going to put in underneath here low enough so that the tiles finish flush with the top of the oven. Uh, and you can also go for the quarry tile. So this is a standard quarry tile, which will just sit in there beautifully. Um, but, so that kind of co covers the, the premise of what we're going to do. Uh, I suppose we just best get on and, and do it. Right. Now that I've uh, taped up the edge, and the reason for putting the masking tape on the edge here is just try and keep the wood clean. Otherwise, uh, when you get all the cement on, it runs all the side and doesn't look so clean. So we're going to now mix the cement. Uh, and then we're going to chuck it in here and pack it down, and job's a good one. So come on up closer and have a look. This pre-packed is actually quite nice, because uh, the cement is packed separately. So you just open this up, and I also found that uh, I can mix it quite easily by hand to start with. Uh, so make sure that you mix it completely thoroughly. That's really important. There we go. Now get in there. And that's the importance of having a decent pair of gloves. And what you want to do is get all of the aggregate the same colour. So if you see any dull patches, it's not mixed properly. We're going to start adding water now, and we want a consistency, a little bit like soft serve ice cream. Uh, that'll kind of give us the, the perfect consistency that we need. A 
don't over add the water. If you put too much water in, then it kind of knackers everything. That's coming in. All right, we're all mixed up now. And you can see that uh, it's a little bit like soft serve ice cream, which is just perfect. Uh, although I don't suggest you eat it. That's not really a cool idea. And now what we're gonna do is just carefully place it around the base uh, and start tapping it in. Uh, what you wanna do is try and push the stones down to the bottom and leave what we call the fat at the surface. Okay, so this is what we do. Always remember that you are going to leave space for the terracotta tiles on the top or the little mosaics, um, unless of course you're just going to render it flat. And there are a couple of kind of brush strokes that you can put on it to make it look more pretty, if you know what I mean. Right, the next step is to just trial that level and flat. Now for this oven we've decided to put a little mosaic front across the front here and then we're going to put a terracotta tile in the corner and then we're going to leave that as a, just a rustic kind of finish. So we're going to start off with this little tile in here, just bed that down. Happy days, it's kind of level there, going in here, level with the front. You'll see that the cement kind of bulges up around it. It's not a problem. Now you can see I'm not a tiler. Uh, I'm an oven maker. But if you're a bathroom tiler, you'll probably look at my work and go, ooh, ooh, but it's an outdoor oven. Okay, so there we have it. We've got the two um, terracotta tiles in and we've got these lovely mosaics across the front. I've just kind of rubbed them in uh, and what we need to do now is just leave them to set. You can see you can still, you've still got sitting water and what you need to do is for the water to just dry off so that the, the surface kind of uh, beds down. And when it's dull, you can then come back and polish the tiles off to get rid of the excess cement and you can put some texture onto this wet cement around the edge if that's what you're after. Now in the meantime, while you're waiting for that to kind of set off, the next thing to do is to fire cement the tile in uh, so that it doesn't move and it's nice and level. So that's what we'll do next while we're waiting for the cement to go off. Right, you would have got a tube of this fire cement with your oven and you're going to use the fire cement one to level the tiles off if they're not perfectly level because they're hand cast uh, sometimes they get a little bit of a warp in them and it means that you can just build up the level underneath the tile to level it off and then to point around the edge here you're also going to use the fire cement to bead around the inside edge of the step all the way around and that'll allow the the dome to actually lock in place so the first thing to do is just to check the level of the tile I can feel it's just a tad low here so what we're going to do is lift it out and we're just going to put a little bead of fire cement here. Also, it's important that before you start running the fire cement around the edge, that you get rid of the liquid. You'll see that there's some moisture in here. So you want to get some decent fire cement. So that, that's it there. And uh, this can now bed down. Ah, that's better. You can see it's a lot more level now. And just even it up. And then you can run the fire cement into the groove. Now I know in the instructions of use, we tell you not to uh, bead the, the tiles in. Really, you don't have to. 
Um, uh, on the medium ovens, the tiles fit really tightly uh, and the gaps will just fill up with ash. So it's entirely up to you. And you can get this fire cement from any B&Q store. So that's just in there. Um, and now with the new tiles that we use, uh, there's very little expansion on them. So uh, it's not going to happen like the terracotta tiles where they crack and explode on you. That was old effort. And then you just run this edge in. Now we just have to wait for uh, the cement to just dry off. And you can see it's just starting to go. Um, and we'll come back to that shortly. Right, you'll be happy to know that the main construction work is now finished. So you can take your hard hat off, take your goggles off, and uh, now really what you need to do is phone your mates. Uh, and the reason for that is, I'm not going to lie, the ovens are heavy. Now this is a small oven and two of us can lift this up. So these are the steps then. The first thing you need to do is to get that wooden roller out and you're going to just put that on the front of the oven like this and put a little stone there so that it doesn't run away from you. The next thing you want to do is get your mate round to help you. And what we've done is we've just put some wedges underneath the edge of the oven so that we're not going to get our fingers trapped. You want to get a pair of gloves um, onto your hands to do this. Uh, you also need to get yourself a little scissor jack. Now the scissor jack's not so important for the small oven, but definitely for the medium or the insulated ovens. Uh, and then a jack handle. You also need a couple of pieces of wood, which I had here, and then I threw away. So I'll just grab those. Ah, there they are. And this is, uh, you're going to put one of them on here for the jack and the other one just underneath the lip of the oven. All right. So I want you to imagine is that you can see this concrete is just kind of starting its sheen. And I would rather that you had kind of done this in the morning um, and you're going to put the dome on in the afternoon or done this on a Friday afternoon evening and you're now doing this on Saturday morning. Uh, so these are the steps. You want to get your fire cement and you're going to fill this gap all the way around here with a good 10 millimeter bead all the way around with a fire cement. Having located my gloves, we can now do this next stage. So uh, I'm going to ask Simon to help me. I've put the beers in the fridge so he's happy. Okay. And also make sure you move everything out of the way so you're not going to trip over everything. Okay, we're going to get it under here. Just rock it forward. Up. Okay, get it. Get the back up. Okay. okay. Get the back onto the roller. You got it? Okay, and then just roll it back. Okay, well, now that we've got the oven up here, all we have to do is really line it up. So uh, we're just going to shuffle this across. There we go. Oh, too far. And now we're going to use the jack to just jack it up into the air. And this method here with the jack works for all of our ovens. It's brilliant, even for the large, uh, large oven, which is like 650 kilos. We do this exactly the same thing. And that's it. That's squidged into the fire cement. It looks good all the way around. Now you'll see around the edge of the oven around here, there are some gaps. So what I'd like you to do is to fire your oven first, make sure it's hot, make sure all the aggregate is dried out. And then what you're going to do is, uh, once you've used the oven a couple of times, is get your high heat fire cement. And this is a great, sorry, high heat silicon sealer. Uh, this silicon sealer can handle like 1,200 degrees centigrade. It's fantastic stuff. And then your final job after you use the oven and it's dry is to take this and then to run a bead all the way around the oven, filling this gap around here, uh, filling in just on the inside edge here so that you have an oven that looks absolutely beautiful. Now, if you've bought uh, some of the accessories like the chimney, the chimney just goes on the top, the doorway, if you've bought the uh, door guard, then that goes in here, the fire baskets, and then realistically, once the uh, aggregate is set, all you're going to do is take some wire wool and then just rub this clean. I see we forgot to put the Little Bushman logo on, and this is uh, the important thing. So we've put him on now, and this is what your oven will look like when it's finished. We hope you have a fantastic time with your Bushman wood fired up. So many people ask us if it's necessary to have a chimney for our ovens. And in truth, it's entirely up to you. I myself 
much prefer it with a chimney. I think the oven looks finished. But for years and years and years, I sold the ovens without chimneys, and this is how they would, were finished, just with a rustic lid. Uh, with a rustic lid. Um, you could also get a, one of the little lid grids. And again, for years, we used the oven just with one of these little lid grid accessories in the top. And that was quite cool because that means you could put a frying pan over there. It was quite difficult to see what you were cooking, but it also kept food nice and warm. So there is that kind of advantage. Uh, when you're not using the oven, the little lid on the top there kind of made it look quite cool. But as time went on, loads of people asked us about chimneys. Um, and so we found a really easy way of fitting a chimney to our oven, and that's like this. We have these little special uh, uh, flue connectors made, and that just drops into the top there. And using the fire cement, uh, you just seal it in. Once that was sealed in place, uh, for the small oven, we recommend a 600 or half meter flue pipe, and that just drops into the top there. And then uh, a cow, and that goes on the top. Now, the advantage of this assembly is that when the fire is going, it draws a lot faster and a lot easier. It comes to temperature a lot quicker, and it also means that any smoke in the initial stages are venting way above your head. So it's a much more enjoyable experience. And the other advantage of having a chimney section on the front is you'll find that the front of your oven stays a lot cleaner for longer. So if you're thinking of the chimney, that's what it looks like. That's how it goes together. And uh, if you want one, we can ship one out with the oven to you, or alternatively, we can ship it after you've got the oven. Well, that really was um, a couple of hours' work, and we've got the oven on the rustic wooden stand. We've done a lovely little mosaic trim across the edge. We've done all the cementing in, and we've put the dome on. Uh, so that really is the small Bushman wood-fired oven on a rustic stand. We also have the stand for a medium-sized oven. So if you like the look of that, then uh, give us a call, order that, and uh, we'll get it shipped on to you. Uh, you would have seen the assembly for the medium size, at least for the rustic wooden stand, in a previous video. You've just got to love Bushman. Ha, ha, ha.